have quite a lot of favorite poems. Um, I love Shel Silverstein, Jack Bolletsky are my favorite humorous poets. Uh, but I also like the serious ones. Emily Dickinson is amazing. Um, also, uh, Edna St. Vincent Belay and um, Edgar Allan Poe is really awesome, but his poems scare me way too much, so I can't really cite him as like a big inspiration because I haven't written that many horror po poems and stories. But um, definitely, uh, and I'm going to right here, what is his name? Um, actually, William Carlos Williams, The Red Wheelbarrow, is a really good one. I wouldn't say like one of my favorite poets, but definitely shows his poetry. It can be very concise and to the point. It doesn't have to have like a deeper meaning like that. Um, and also, uh, some really great poems. Uh, do you want like a poem in particular or a poet? Poem. A poem. Oh. Okay, well, a really good poem. Um, and when, so if you want an example of poetry that has been inspired by war, and this is kind of fitting uh, right after Memorial Day, but a really good poem is In Flanders Fields by John McRae, which is a, a beautiful poem. And that's a great one if you're thinking about you know, writing like a poem about a battle or something, because that describes kind of the aftermath of World War One. So that's a great poem. Um, any other questions? Okay. Um, other than writing books, what else do you do? Other than writing books, what else do I do? No, this is my entire life. I just spend my whole. No, I'm joking. Um, I a lot of people give that image that I'm sitting in a little room just typing out my stories every day. I actually wish I had more time for writing because now I'm doing a lot of video conferencing. I've been doing this for quite a while actually. Uh, and I do teaching. This is one of my favorite things. I love to teach uh, and talk about lessons and write poems, but I do, uh, obviously writing is a big part of my life. Also, also, um, I don't, my mom is like making gestures to me. I have no idea what she's trying to say. But uh, also, I have many hobbies like hiking and biking. Uh, I've been looking for an easy sport to play right now because people keep on asking if I do sports. I do a lot of traveling. I um, oh, that's what my mom was gesturing. She was making all these like flying movements. <laughs> and I, so world travel is kind of a big thing that I do because I do a lot of speaking engagements, going to conferences to speak to audiences, uh, and also this year. Uh, and you guys should tune into this because um, I don't know what you're on the East Coast, right? Yes. We yes. Are. Okay. So the time the time might be a little weird, but um, for TEDx Redmond, I'm organizing this conference called TEDx Redmond, which is all about youth and uh, all of our. We had it last year. All of our speakers were under 18, and uh, our main audience members were under 18, and all of our organizers are under 18. So it's very much youth run. Uh, last year we had the youngest person to climb Mount Everest come and speak. We had. Uh, the founder of Kids vs. Global Warming. We had all these different nonprofits and uh, kids who had founded charities and all this amazing stuff. So TEDx Redmond, I'm organizing this again this year, and there will be a live stream going on online. So if you check that out, um, that's that's what I'm working on right now quite a bit is organizing events. And can I take one more question? Are you homeschooled? Actually, my school, uh, here's how my school works. I go to an online public school, Washington Virtual Academy, so it's much like a public school in that I still get grades and uh, my teachers you know, grade my work and I have to turn things in on time. But it is online, so I get my curriculum. Um, and I may, and that way I'm able to do traveling and video conferencing and my writing, and uh, it lets me have a more flexible schedule. But I also, last semester, I also did some classes at my local school, so I'm able to take classes at my local school and online, which is pretty nice. So, when, when you get home or when you have access to a computer, check out TEDx Redmond because we have, we also have videos from last year and it's really inspiring to see all of these. We had a poet, we have um, some authors actually uh, in the house, and uh, we had all these young people, really your age and mine, some older, some younger, talk about what they did and uh, who they were, and the greatest thing about it was that even though these speakers had all done really awesome things, afterwards we were playing tag in the cafeteria. So if you think that someone who has founded a nonprofit or someone that is like making CDs cannot be chased around a cafeteria, then you know rethink that. So <laughs> TEDx Drummond shows how really ordinary um, students just like you and me can do amazing things. So check it out. That's what I'm working on right now as well as I'm hoping to write another book of poetry, I need to get back onto poetry writing. I haven't written a poem for a while. And 
If you guys have any questions or emails or poems to send me, please go to my website, adorcitytalk.com. And it was great talking to you. And uh, does the teacher have any questions or comments? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Great job, guys. Have a have a um. <laughs>